Hello everyone. In this video, we are covering the two very important concepts of reliability and durability of products. These are actually two different concepts that are sometimes bundled together under reliability, but actually it's quite interesting to separate them into two separate concepts. And as always, I am with Andrew Amenavin. Hi, Andrew. Hello, Renaud. Good to see you again. So let's go into it. The several attributes of products, right? So for example, does it look good? Uh, that's a, an attribute that will help the product sell, right? Like a nice Tesla. Wow, that's great, right? Also, does it do what it promises, right? Such as, if you remember the ads with the Duracell bunnies uh, versus the more generic, you know, rest of the market that, that was not lasting that long. So that's the key promise of the product. Uh, the, you know, does it work? Does it actually have the performance that it's supposed to, to have? And then when it comes to, you know, will the product fail or not? Uh, there are two very important concepts that we want to, uh, to, to go over. So uh, Andrew, what, what is the concept of product durability? Well, durability is when you have a designed product that doesn't necessarily cover a certain amount of protection in terms of reliability. You know, let's say, for example, you designed a product for a one meter drop test, but now the user is actually testing it for at 1.5 meter. So that extra stress that the, the normal user, user is going to use the product, that would make the product not so durable. However, if it was used exactly to the specification that it was designed for, for example, one meter drop, then it's going to be reliable. So that would be the difference between the two. Okay. So durability role here is based on what we think are normal use conditions. You know, is it going to be to, to keep working, right? So when you say 1.5 meter, an adult person's hand uh, might be at 1.5 meters. So if the phone is dropped from here, that's a normal use condition, right? Um, yes, it is normal use condition. However, it needs to be designed in. And if it's not designed in, that means it's not durable enough to handle that height. And that's the difference between the reliability and durability. So you can make a product be reliable at a certain level of height or stress level. And, and if the use condition is exactly the same, then you're going to have a, a reliable and durable product. However, if the user is going to use that product beyond what it was designed for as a reliable product, then you uh, you will have uh, durability issues. Okay. So first, yeah. So let let's keep looking into that that concept of durability. So can you walk us through these these few fun examples uh, that we found on YouTube? Absolutely. I mean, I think this uh, Nokia phone uh, was dropped from nine hundred feet and still survived. It's an excellent example of a durable product even though it was probably not intended for that kind of a height but it was actually survived so it means that it actually was very durable in the same case in the case of the knife uh, that you know there were a lot of uh, uh, what I call uh, um, YouTube uh, uh, it's signed a kind of silly uh, uh, videos about uh, you could do anything on that phone and still not break There's it. Break it. There's another mm -hmm. one exactly. They shoot the phone with a uh, with a uh, a bullet and and many others. And basically, uh, they are calling this the uh, legendary three thirty three ten. That was an amazing product. Mm -hmm. And I actually worked for Nokia, so I'm proud of that product. I do remember. <laughs> and now let's go over the. The twin concept of reliability then. What, what is a reliable product? So reliability in contrast to durability is when you have actually designed a product to last for a certain period of time. For example, 
uh, warranty limit of two years. So you want to make sure for at least two years, this product is going to operate without any kind of failures. So that's more of a uh, reliability uh, you know, definition. And usually you will have to design the reliability. They, they call it design for reliability process. You have to start that right from the early development, such as EVT, and continue that growth for reliability until uh, PVT pr production, basically. Right. Okay. And then an example of a, a product or a component that you really, really want to be reliable? Yes. <laughs> Definitely, you don't want the jet engine to fail in the middle of the you know, sky when you're on it. So that's a very good example of a reliable product that must uh, not fail during the intended period of time. Right. So um, when we look at some catastrophic failures, we're wondering, you know, do they come mostly from a lack of durability or a lack of reliability? And, you know, to illustrate that, Let's go over two, two examples. So here we have the Samsung Note uh, that triggered a very expensive recall. Uh, and there was a lot of talk about that a few years ago. And basically, if we understand correctly, they did not add enough uh, packing around the battery. And then they say that, yeah, that there was a design flow in a corner that in some cases caused, you know, a short circuit, which is a very bad thing when you have right. this, this kind of battery. So in this case, what 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 is the the source of the issue here? Well, really, the uh, you know this is a real good example of durability and reliability because really it impacted both uh, the way it failed. But I think it's a great point to make how things can go wrong if the product is not tested properly for reliability and has not covered all the possible scenarios that can go wrong. And that's exactly why you want to have design for FMEA done on your early development. And then you want to cover a lot of risk scenarios and you want to test the product for all kinds of possible ways that either by itself or in the environment or by the user can be used in the wrong way and can cause, for example, in this case, a short that that was very costly for Samsung. Yes. So in this case, basically, there's a certain corner where if it was dropped for a certain height, uh, maybe on a concrete floor at a certain angle, this placed some components and created a short, right? And it, it yeah. probably did not cover that. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Let's cover another very expensive recall, the Takata airbags in some Toyota models. And right. again, I'm putting information straight from, 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 from the source, uh, from what the manufacturer said. And they say that the non-desiccated propellant could absorb moisture and degrade over time, right? right? So this is reliability, right? Yeah, this was very, very sad situation because uh, unfortunately this particular uh, supplier was pretty much the only supplier of of the airbags for many many uh, car companies, car producers, and so the impact was huge. And as you mentioned, uh, there was a a faulty component that once, uh, as a result of moisture, rusted, then it wouldn't function properly, and then at the point of impact this particular point everything all these metals will just turn into shrapnel and actually you know basically fire right at your face and there were definitely some people killed as a result of this and so the main point is that it wasn't properly tested for reliability and possibly durability meaning that they should have tested this for a component for beyond uh, what it will be used in different environments, uh, long-term life tests that it should have been done on this product. And the components itself should have been 
pushed to the limits to understand the limitations of when they actually start failing. And if they fail earlier than what the product stacks is spec for, then they should not use that component. And this was not the case. They didn't do proper and enough testing on this product. Mm, right. All right. Well, very instructive. So reliability and durability are often uh, intertwined, really. And uh, Absolutely. failure, uh, failure uh, analysis uh, needs to look at both of them. Okay. Well, that, that's great. Thanks a lot, Andrew. And uh, Thank you, thanks Renal. For, thanks for everyone viewing the video. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks. See you next time.